Lily Girl, J. Milton. The blind Milton has written a lyrical and fanciful tale to dispel the melancholies of life. He focuses on the good things. This was obviously studied by a student or students because of all the handwritten notes in the margins. I'm going to simply quote them as best I can see them, some I can't make out. It begins with the trials of melancholy, but resists this and turns to the good goddess and mirth or happiness. The writings in the margins. L'Allegro is a happy man. I wasn't sure about this. And darkness is the fiend. Is melancholy and the leopard euphrosyne is grace granted art easing is music zephyr open air Sager Singh is Milton himself, Aurora is Dawn. Wanton Wiles, Wreathed Smiles, Parallel Structure, and some kind of personification that would be wrinkled care and laughter holding their side. Looks like memorized short words. I don't know why you would do that. Tactile, I'm not sure. Not sure. Liberty, people free. And it says broken agrees with startle and song. The lark singing and startled. Skies rise, sorrow, moral alliteration. And sorrow bid on the good morrow after calling all day. Some kind of rhetorical structure. Um, this suggestive of hearing hounds and horn. I think that's in the poem. Not unseen is observable. The state is procession. Flames and amber light, all colored. And in different writing, looks like a fountain pen. Talks about, it shows the description and imagery. with something. Towers, bosom high, church, or manor house. Again, alliteration and personification. Human interest, beauty lies, human interest. The upland hamlets will invite L'Allegro, the happy man. <laughs> when the merry bells ring round, alliteration. She is a country wench. 
he one of the crowd. Flings, Dorothy flings his energy, lulled asleep, soft musical. Slothed melancholy of Cerberus and blackest midnight born in Stygian cave forlorn, amongst horrid shapes and shrieks and sights unholy. Find out some uncouth cell where brooding darkness spreads his jealous wings and the night raven sings. There, under ebon shades and low browed rocks as ragged as thy locks, in dark Sumerian desert ever dwell. Let come thou goddess fair and free in heaven you left your you frozen in. And by men heart easing mirth, whom lovely Venus at a birth with two sister graces more, to I be crowned Bacchus bore. Or whether, as some sager sing, the frolic wind that breathes the spring, Zephyr with Aurora playing, as he met her once a May. There on beds of violets blue and fresh blown roses washed in dew, filled her with thee, a daughter fair, so buxom, blithe, and debonair. Haste thee, nymph, and bring with thee jest and youthful jollity, quips and cranks and wanton wiles, nods and becks and wreathed smiles such as hang on Hebe's cheek, and love to live in dimple sleek. Spot that wrinkled care der sport that wrinkled care derides, and laughter holding both his sides. Come and trip it as you go on the light fantastic toe. And in thy right hand lead with thee the mountain nymph sweet liberty, and if I give thee honour due, mirth admit me of thy crew. To live with her and live with thee in unreproved pleasure, f pleasures free. To hear the lark begin his flight and singing startle the dull night from his watchtower in the skies till the dappled dawn doth rise. Then to come in spite of sorrow and at my window bid good morrow through the sweet briar or the vine or the twisted eagland thyme, while the cock with lively din scatters the rear of darkness thin, and to the stack or the barn door stoutly struts his dames before. Oft, lis oft listening how the hounds and horn cheerily rouse the slumbering morn from the side of some hoar hill through the high wood echoing shrill, Sometime walking not unseen by hedgerow elms on hillocks green, right against the eastern gate where the great sun begins his state, robed in flames and amber light, the clouds in thousand liveries dight, while the ploughman near at hand whistles o'er the furrowed land, and the milkmaid singeth blithe, and the mower wets his scythe. And every shepherd tells his tale under the hawthorn in the dale. Straight mine eye hath caught new pleasures, whilst the landscape round it measures, russet lawns and fallows grey, where the nibbling flocks do stray. Mountains on whose barren breast the labouring clouds do often rest. Meadows trim with daisies pied, 
Shallow brooks and rivers wide, towers and battlements it sees, bosomed high in tufted trees, where perhaps some beauty lies, the sinister of neighboring eyes. Hard by a cottage chimney smokes from betwixt to two aged oaks, where Corridon and fire of Cisnet are at their savory dinner set, the herbs and other country masses, which the neat handed Phyllis dresses. And then in haste her bower she leaves, with Estelus to bind the sheaves, or, in the, if the earlier season lead, to the tanned haycock in the mead. Sometimes, with secure delight, the upland hamlets will invite. When the merry bells ring round, and the jocund rebeck sound, to many a youth and many a maid dancing in the checkered shade, and young and old come forth to play on a sunshine holy day, till the live long daylight fail, then to the spicy nut brown ale, with the stories told of many a feat, how fairy maid and junkets eat. She was pinched and pulled, she said, and he by friar's lantern led, tells how the judging goblin sweat to earn his cream bowl duly set. When in one night, ere glimpse of morn, his shadowy flail hath threshed the corn, that ten day laborers could not end, then lies him down the lover fiend, and stretched out all the chimney's length, basks at the fire his hairy strength, and cropful out of doors he flings, ere the first cock his matin rings. Thus done, the tales to bed they creep, by whispering winds soon lulled asleep. Towered cities please us then, and the busy hum of men, where throngs of knights and barons bold, in weeds of peace high triumphs hold, with store of ladies whose bright eyes reign influence, and judge the prize of wit or arms, while both contend to win her grace, whom all commend. There let Hymen oft appear, in saffron robe with taper clear, and pomp and feast and revelry, with mask and antique pageantry, such sights as youthful poets dream on summer eves by haunted stream, then to the well-trod stage and on, with Johnson's learned sock be on. Or sweetest Shakespeare fancies child warbled his native wood notes wild, and ever against eating cares, let me in soft Lydian airs, married to immortal verse, such as the meeting soul may pierce, in notes with many a winding bout, of linked sweetness long drawn out. With wanton heed and giddy cunning, the melting voice through mazes running, untwisting all the chains that tie the hidden soul of harmony, that Orpheus' self may heave his head from golden slumber on a bed, of heaped Elysian flowers, and hear such strains as would have won the ear of Pluto to have quite set free his half-regained Eurydice. These delights, if thou canst give, mirth with thee, I mean to live.